Yeah, that's right, we are back. <laughs> Today I'm pretty excited because I've received a package and I'm hoping that inside there is a Santa Cruz Winkowski Dope Planet deck. So let's have a little peek inside. Let's open this end up. Oh, here we go, straight in. Oh, Jessup Grip. Never had that before. Bit of paperwork. And there she blows. Get rid of this package. Okay, let's take a look around. So, starting with that graphic. Oh my gosh. Saying matte finish. 10.034 inches, which is the widest point of the deck. We've got what looks to be a shark. Winkowski written around the nose. And then some sort of nice desert island scenes. Plenty of water. The Winkowski 8-Ball, Santa Cruz, Skull and Crossbones, oh my goodness, Dope Planet written across the back, the all c and I, Mushrooms, and flipping her over, let's take a look at the tops. We've got that nice round Santa Cruz graphic, got a serial number, and we've got the dimensions written in here, 10.034 at the widest point, 30.54 length, and a 15 inch wheelbase. It looks to be a Santa Cruz sticker in here, which you can pop on the bottom, and I usually do. There is the barcode and also the usual warning, skate within your abilities, injury or death may result from improper use. Oh my goodness. Right, let's get this cellophane wrapper off. Just take that sticker off of there. Woo. Now the reason I was interested in getting hold of this deck is it has very similar dimensions to my beloved Kendall Snake. It has the same 15 inch wheelbase. It's just a touch wider. It has a very similar looking fish tail, which I really like. But the most important thing they have in common is the Cruise Missile 2 Concave. Now I absolutely love this Concave and it has a few interesting features. Number one, there's a little kick on the tail at the back there. Now you probably can't see it in the video, but the tail comes up into a little concave of its own. And I find this has a couple of key advantages. Number one, it locks my back foot in position in the pocket. Now I seem to have a bit of a wandering back foot. It's sort of all over the shop. And I just find it handy to know whereabouts I am on this tail. And this little kick up helps me locate my foot just in the pocket. The second advantage I've found is there is a little bump on the back of the tail before you get to the actual back of the tail. And this seems to take the brunt of any dropping in, any sort of manuals that are fluffed. And that gets worn instead of making a razor tail. So if you have a look at the Kendall Snake, which is a bit worn, you can see there that there's an awful lot of wear on that bump. But when it comes down to the tail, it's still really nice and round and not razor-like at all. The second thing I like about the Cruise Missile 2 Concave is there's a little bit of rocker in the center, another sort of bump that helps lock the front foot in place. So you probably can't see it again in the video, but it just, a little bit of a bump there. And the third thing is the actual concave itself is pretty mellow, provides a nice flat surface for those sort of more retro feeling tricks. Now, obviously it's personal preference whether you like the Cruise Missile 2 Concave. It's pretty quirky. But those features really work for me when I'm riding the Kendall Snake. Another thing I was excited about is the Winkowski has got a slightly more generous nose. Just another half inch up the front there. I find that the Kendall Snake is really lacking in the nose area. So I'm hoping that this will allow me to whoo, get up the front there, get a little bit more nose going on. If we compare the Winkowski and the Kendall Snake, you can see there's pretty much no difference at all. The tail looks to be identical, which is great news because I love that tail. The way it draws in across the back wheels is exactly the same. It just nips out by the smallest margin where the front foot goes. And I was thinking if I don't like this, I could just sand those little money bumps back and have the same profile as the Kendall Snake. And you can see on the nose there, all round a bigger nose, both lengthways and widthways, so that could be quite exciting. 
So this is one of those graphics that the more you look at it, the more you notice. Just seen that it's got written tall boy in green on here. And there's also loads of other bits and bobs. I really do like the look of this graphic. I'm gonna rig this up with this Jessup grip tape, which is 10 inches wide. The grip tape I usually get is the Grizzly and that's nine inches wide, but the Jessup came free with this. I've never tried Jessup before, but it looks like grip tape. So I'm gonna pop that on and I think I'm gonna cut out a circle for this graphic here. I really like this black top veneer on the board. It's a shame that that's gonna be covered up, but I think a simple hole here, grip tape on, and that will be very nice indeed. Okay, I've offered up a few round objects and I found the top of my tea urn is just right to cover up that graphic. So I reckon if I use that as a stencil on the back of my grip tape, cut that out, I should be able to slap that on with a little bit of jiggery pokery. So that is the grip tape all finished. I went pretty simple with this one, just that logo poking out and the rest is deck grip. Now regular viewers might be wondering if I really need another deck. And my rationale here is that the snake is starting to get a bit ragged. She's creaking away. I'm using her in the pool an awful lot and oh, giving her a bit of a battering. So this one is hopefully gonna replace the snake, give this guy a little bit of rest. All of these sort of reissue style boards tend to be really expensive once they go out of manufacture. So to try and get the original Dope Planet board, that is pretty pricey. To try and get hold of a Kendall Snake at the moment is also the same deal. They are reissuing the Kendall Snake coming this winter, but I don't really want to wait that long. So my idea is to use this bad boy in the pool. It's a little bit wider than the snake, but I don't think that's going to matter for a bit of carving and grinding. And I am excited to try out this half inch more nose. The main thing is this cruise missile two concave, which I love. Some of you may remember I reviewed the Atomic Man and I really enjoyed the Kendall Atomic Man. It definitely had more nose, but the main thing this one was lacking was the cruise missile two concave. And I really missed that. So there's just a couple more jobs to do. I'm gonna fit the Santa Cruz rails, which are my favorites. I've done a video on this, so if you wanna know the nitty gritty of fitting the Santa Cruz rails, you can click on that link. Also, in the interest of a proper comparison for the decks, I'm gonna stick the rolling stock wheels and trucks from the Kendall, which I'm used to. Then I'm gonna head down to the bowl and to the mini ramp and see how the Winkowski deck stacks up against the Kendall. So there we are, all finished. The Santa Cruz Winkowski Dope Planet deck, looking pretty 80s. Got the Santa Cruz slimline rails, independent 159 hollow trucks with the 58 millimeter Spitfire wheels off of McKendall, and that Jessup grip. I cannot wait to get out there and give this a go. Crikey, that was a lot of fun. 
Unsurprisingly, the deck didn't feel that different to the Kendall Snake. I didn't really notice these extra money bumps. It's only about a quarter of an inch extra width in one place. I did enjoy the nose, a lot more generous, and I found that doing any nose orientated tricks were a real joy. That concave at the front there, I could really get my foot in the pocket, not sort of teetering on the edge as I do with the snake. That cruise missile two concave is a real joy, locking the front foot in and the tail feels pretty much identical to the snake. The deck was fun on the mini ramp. I managed to rattle off my usual bag of tricks with relative ease and the overall feel inspired me to do more retro style tricks and oh my goodness, that graphic is pretty retro. And if you're looking for a deck that really stands out and pops in photos, I reckon this could be a good choice. The place where this deck really excelled for me was in the bowl. I enjoyed the carving feel and that inspired me to get a few deep end double truckers, which I haven't done for a while. It felt great on the stalls, that extra width inspired a bit of confidence and I managed to get my longest frontside 50-50 grind to date. I reckon if you're a bigger rider like I am, I'm six foot three with size 11 feet and you like a bit of retro flavour, you'll probably like this deck. I'm still getting used to it, I'm more comfortable on the snake but I've ridden that for over a year. So it's fair to say with a bit more practice, I'll get used to the look of the plan shape from the rider's perspective. I'll make use of that extra bit of nose and overall I just get the confidence as far up as it is with a snake. Well, that's it for this video. If you're new to this channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I make new videos every week. You can also follow me on Instagram at John Bishop Skate. As ever, my name's been John Bishop and I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to skate. Thank <laughs> you.